Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome to another PyQD5 tutorial video. My name is Jay. In this video, I'll be going over the basic usage of using the Qlist widget class in PyQD5. Alright, so Qlist widget is what you use to create a list box in PyQD5 framework. It's also one of the most useful widgets. In this video, I'll show you how to create a simple list box using Qlist widget in Python. So here I pre-wrote some of the, the code already. In this script, I import the system module from the Qt widgets module. I import the Q application class, Q widget class. I also need to import the Qlist widget class. And this is the class that creates the list box. And here I have a list widget demo class with the Qlist widget class as the parent class. And by default, I only set the list widget size to 500 by 500. And here's my main routine. All right, so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the font size using the set style sheets method. And I'll set the font size to 35 pixel. Next, I'm going to create a list of variables. Each variable is going to store the name of each month. So for January, I'm going to store January. And February will be February and so on. And I'll create the months up to June. All right. So once you have the once once you have the items created, so these are our items we want to insert to our list widget. For the first example, I'm going to show you how to add one item at a time. So this one will be add one item at a time. And to add an item, we can use a method called add item. And there are two ways to add an item. So here from the Qt widgets module, I'm also going to import a class called Qlist widget item class. So Qlist widget class use Qlist widget item as an internal model to merge each item within the list. So the easiest way to add an item is just to pass a variable. In this case, we're going to pass gen variable, and this is going to be a string. But if you want to have more controls on what you want to do with uh, each uh, list widget item, you can insert the Qlist widget item, and we can pass the variable January. I'm also going to add February as well. Now, if I launch the list box, and here I forgot to change the name. This should be a list widget demo. And if I launch the list widget, we have two Januarys and one February. And that's one way to insert items. I'm going to comment out line 20. If you want to add multiple items at a time, we can use a method called add items. Very similar to add item method, except that uh, this will be add items, so Perl. And the add items method is going to accept a uh, array object. So we can provide list. Inside this list, I'm going to insert April and June. I'm skipping March and May. Uh, I'll show you why in a second. Now if I launch the window, and you have our January, February, April, and June. All right, so what's still missing uh, March and June? It should not June and May. So I misspoke before. It should be March and May. All right, so let me launch the window real quick. Now let's say I want to add an item uh, in between some of the items. So for example, I want to insert March uh, between February and April and May between April and June. And to do that, so we can use a different method called insert item. Oh, and this one will be add multiple items. And this one is going to be add item based on row position. So we can use a method called insert item. And this insert method uh, takes two parameters. So the first parameter is the row index, and the second parameter is the item. 
Now, if I want to insert March to the uh, third position, then I'll insert the index of two. And for May, I want to uh, insert the item to the fifth position. Then I'll insert, then I'll insert four as the uh, row index value. Now, if I launch the window, now we have all the months in our list widget from January all the way to June. All right, so the last thing I want to show you is how to retrieve the item value. So here I'm going to create a method. I'm going to name this method get item. And I'm going to insert a parameter called list item. Let me plot the documentation. I mean, uh, increase the font size. If you search for a signal on the queue list widget documentation, Oops, uh, signals, right. The Qlist widget has uh, this many signals that you can use. So let's say if you want to retrieve an item based on current row uh, change, then you can use uh, the current row change signal. And if you want to retrieve an item's value based on, uh, let's say if, we, if you double click on it, if you double click your mouse or, or single click your mouse, then you can use uh, item click or item double click signals. And I'm going to use item double click signal to uh, retrieve the current value or the current selection value when I double click on my mouse. So here I'm going to insert the signal name that connects. I want to connect to the get item method. So when the item double click signal is fired. This signal will actually pass a queue list item object. So here, if I print list item, and if I select amount, let's choose January. If I double click, the item double click signal will fire and it's going to call the get item method and it's going to pass the queue list widget item object. And if I want to print the select item information. So there are actually two ways to do it. The first way is to use the current item method dot text and self dot current item will return a queue list widget item object. And based on the queue list widget items attribute and methods, we can use the text method to get the select item text. And the other way is to uh, use the argument. So list item dot text. If I want to get the uh, current row index, then I can use the current row method to get the, uh, the item selection row position. Now let me launch the window. If I select March and double click, and from my console window, app two marches print and followed by the followed by the select item position, which is two. All right, so this is everything I want to cover in this video, and hopefully you guys found the video useful. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.